Welcome back to Escapement and Watch. I'm your host, Falling Titan, today comparing these two gems, 62 and 63 mass. This one is not an SPB 149, it may look like it, but this one is an SPB 143 63 mass, and it has been modified with a 149 dial. Check out my review on the SPB 143. This watch had a lot of issues that I had to fix and modify but now it's in tip top condition and we're just gonna call it the 63 for this video. Now let's get into that K shape. As you can see, it is familiar. The iconic 62 mass look reimagined. A little bit of a difference in the center of gravity. It is lower on this. It's got a huge high polished bevel all along the top of the shoulder line going throughout the case with that beautiful subtle arc. It is a stunning design. Seiko has managed to completely redesign this watch in a new look and it still looks familiar and you can clearly see it is a 62 mass redone in a new look. What do you guys think? A lot of people were a bit unhappy with the thicker bezel but it gives it a new identity a more tool vibe and a beefier look. I'm a fan of it and I think you guys are too. This watch, the original one has a hundred and over 120,000 views on the channel and it makes sense because the watch is beautifully done. Now let's check out the 62 mass. This is the SLA 043 62 mass more faithful recreation. Seiko is calling it the recreation meaning they are remaking their icon in modern times. One of my subs called it the 62 mass remastered and I loved it. So I'm going to take it and I love it. The 62 mass remastered. That's what this one is. So for this one, Seiko is using a different type of steel and the K shape is more true to form with the sharper edges all along those beautiful lugs. Faceted design at the end with the multi sides abrupt cut off. Very nicely done with this ever brilliant steel. Seiko saying the ever brilliant steel is very difficult to work with, very difficult to cut and shape, but they got through it, probably cost them an arm and a leg, but it is worth it. Look at this steel. It looks like white gold. Let's check them out side by side. Look at that taper on the lugs, a little bit more dramatic on the 63. The lugs are a bit more thicker on the 62 mass. Interesting design there. Now let's look at the sides. Same basic slope and profile. One a little bit more smoother and softer and one more sharper and more well-defined. Beautiful seeing these two gems beside each other. I'm excited doing the video. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Uh, shots. Let's try to get the full side profile with each other. Family resemblance is clearly seen, but can you guys tell the difference between 316L and Ever Brilliant Steel? The Ever Brilliant Steel is on my right. This is the 62 mass. It has a white gold sheen and luster, very similar to 904L Steel. The Rolex uses but Seiko says this one is almost two times as strong, more corrosion resistance, more pitting resistance. This one is the standard 316L stainless steel. So both are well done and the cases are fantastic. 62, a lot more sharper, but the 63 beautifully beveled and rounder, more smoother design. Now let's check out the movement. The 62 mass has a hand assembled movement in Japan. So some classical watchmaking used in making this fine timepiece. And that's really special. If you're into horology, it's nice to have a watch that a single watchmaker put together. It's just special and it means a lot. Okay, so this one, 50 hours of power reserve, 26 joules, 28.8 vibrations per hour and of course no stamp parts all milled all forged and mems technology 
use to make all the tiny parts. So a world-class movement. This one is going to keep its rating longer and the positional variance is going to be basically zero. So if this is doing two seconds a day, dial up, it's going to do two seconds a day, upside down, left, right, 12 down, etc. And it's going to do it for longer, a movement you can keep for life, a high quality caliber. Now, 63 mass. 63 mass uses a machine made movement, the 6R35, 70 hour power reserve, so 20 hours more, hack hand wine, 24 joules, uh, it does have stand parts. It's going to have a little bit more variation in positional accuracy. And of course, you can keep it for a lifetime. But in some cases, I've had some people who have 6R movements. When they told me to service their watch, they told me just throw it out and put a 4R in there because it's only a $30 replacement. So some people may think of them as throwaway movements. Um, you know what, it depends on your watchmaker's price to service. It should be only about $150 to service this and it should last a lifetime. However, there is a difference in quality between the two parts. You're getting a lot more quality in materials and workmanship in the 62 versus the 63. But then again, this movement can be crazy accurate. I regulated this movement myself, but it was doing horribly when I got it. Now the measurements. These are the measurements I got with my own calipers. I redid all the measurements. Okay, for the 62 mass, the diameter, 39.8 millimeters. For the 63, 40.6 millimeters. So almost a full mil bigger on the 63 mass. Now, the thickness, 13.9 on the 62 and 13.4 on the 63, so thinner by about half a mil. Very nice. Okay, now the lug to lug, 48.1 on the 62 and 47.4 on the 63. So the 63, a little bit shorter, lug to lug. Now the bezel measurement, what your eye sees the watch size as, the visual effect. The 62 mass is 39.8, exactly what we got for the diameter. Amazing, but the 63 mass has a 40 millimeter bezel. All right, now the lugs, the 62 mass, 19 millimeter lugs. Difficult to get straps. Now the 63 mass has a more traditional 20 millimeter lugs. The crown of the 62 mass is seven mils, beautiful big crown. And the 63 not lagging too far behind at 6.5. It is proportionate and it does give you still good grip at 6.5 mils. Now, the 62 mass doesn't come with a bracelet. This one at least. This one comes with two silicone waffle straps and it has PVD on this one. Don't know why this is not PVD, but definitely some high finishing on this buckle. This strap is way too long from factory. I took off about an inch and I had to trim it just to make it uh, fit me because it would stick out, the, the, the tip would stick out like up to here and it looked ridiculous on my wrist. So I cut my $200 straps and I think I did a decent job. I cut them and then I sanded them. So be wary of that. Uh, if you have a small wrist, Seiko put, I guess, professional size dive watch straps on this thing and it's way too big. These watches are so premium, they're never gonna see water. Come on, Seiko. Now this size, a lot better. It comes with the, the Willard. It fits well, it has a nice taper. Definitely a fan of this one, but you can get the 63 mass with a bracelet. So a lot more value if you want a bracelet. Definitely the 63 mass gonna be for you, 100%. I love wearing them on the strap, but I just like to be true to the original and I love the look of the 62 mass with the strap. Now the case back, all solid, screw down. You have the Hukusai Wave, beautiful on the 63 mass, no complaints. And of course on the 62 mass, you have that legendary dolphin that was on the original, amazing. 
Now that's a beautiful reminder of the past. I love it. Seiko only reserving it for the real 62 masses. Uh, a little bit of a nice touch, making me smile. Now, the crown is signed with the word Seiko. Very nice. And the 63 mass has no signed crown, but it is nicely machined. Now the bezel and bezel insert. This one, stainless steel with stainless steel insert coated with a black titanium carbide. Beautiful brushed look and it feels premium. A little bit dampened, which I like. Soft clicks. This one lines up perfectly and almost no back play. It has a thick bezel. A lot of people complaining about the thick bezel. They think it creates a chunky look, which it does. And some people not a fan of that. I'm a fan of it. I like it. Now the 62 mass. So this bezel is that special ever brilliant steel. And it's a stunner. There is no back play. The premium clicks feel and sound amazing. You just, oh man. Guys, I had the new Submariner when I went to pick this one up and I was spinning this one and spinning the new Submariner. They felt basically exact same. Seiko home run with this bezel. It's just unbelievable feel. Now the Sapphire Crystal. This one has a beautiful dome, as you can see, with a crazy distortion. When you first feast your eyes on the 62 mass, you're going to be blown away. Remember the first time you've ever watched a uh, high definition anything? The first HD thing you've ever seen? That's what you get with this watch. The crystal is so HD. Seiko uses a special coating and maybe a special glass. I don't know. But when you see it in real life, it blows your mind. The clarity of the crystal is unbelievable. And it has a beautiful dome. Now this one, a little bit more box shaped and it does have AR, not as much distortion, a little bit more square on the top. So less domed than this one. This one's a bit more leaning towards the box sapphire, but it is still sapphire and it's still fantastic. Doesn't have that HD vision you get with this one, but the coating is still not bad. Now the dial and hands, they're both matte looking and sunburst looking at the same time, depending on the lighting. So excellent trick by Seiko. The 63 mass has those hands that are split down the middle, half brushed, half polished. Beautifully done, creating a nice 3D effect, giving the watch dimension and life. It is a beautiful handset and I'm a fan of the 63 mass handset. And the hands on the 62 mass are unbelievable. They are faceted on the sides or chamfered with high polish and beautiful brushing down the middle. Done to perfection. These are made in the Grand Seiko Studio. So you're going to get high quality hands and there is basically no dust in this one. Guys, when I do macros on any price of watch, I find a dust. This one, zero. Now this one, if you watch my old video, had tons of dust in it. And of course I modded it and fixed it. There's a couple specs near the dial. I mean, sorry, near the date window and near eight o'clock, but that's a dial defect. And I've seen a, a couple other 63 masses with dial defects. Uh, it's just part of the mass production. You're not going to get a perfect dial every time you can, but it's not going to happen every time. And the hands were misaligned. Some of you are going to get that as well. But of course you can get it perfect. It's just not gonna happen every time. A little bit of luck needed. Some people call it the Seiko lottery. All right. Now let's check out the price. Here is the big one. The 62 mass. Oh man, 4,500 USD. And the 63 mass can be had, depending on the colorway, from 1,000 to 1,350 USD. The 149 is 1,350 with the bracelet. So that's a hefty price difference. So basically the price is four times as much almost. That's insanity. Are you getting 
four times the watch? I don't know. It's very tough to recommend the 62 mass. You are getting the much better movement, the hand assembly. So you're getting the classical watchmaking. You're getting better materials and better craftsmanship, but are you getting four times as much? I don't know. It's up to you guys. What do you think? I know 90% of you are going to choose this one and that's fine. This one is perfect for every day. You can be happy with it. It's a beautiful Seiko watch and it reminds us of the 62 mass with a little bit of a different take on the design, but there definitely is a market for the original, the original remastered. This is for people who want something a little bit higher caliber. They want to be to the next level. They want something, they want Seiko's best, basically. They want Seiko with no holds bar, nothing stopping them, making it in the Grand Seiko factory, using amazing materials and hand finishing. So basically, you're getting a Rolex Omega level finishing for a little bit of a discount, and you're getting it from a brand that you may or may not love, I don't know. So up to you. It's tough to recommend it when this one exists. If this one didn't exist and Seiko just made the 62 mass in high end versions with all the high quality parts, etc., then then yeah, easy to recommend. But the biggest negative of the 62 mass is the existence of the 63 mass. So that's my take on it. For me, I'm a huge Seiko fan, as you guys know, if you're on this channel. And for me, I, I have to have the 62. It has to be Seiko's best. It has to have the high quality materials, the high quality movement. It has to be hand assembled by one watchmaker. I just, it's so special to me. So there is a little bit of us that are, I guess you can call us Seiko paths. <laughs> And uh, we're willing to uh, pay the little bit of premium or a lot of bit of premium. Is a lot of bit a word? No. But yes, <laughs> for this watch. Up first is the 63 mass, which I regulated. So it might be a little bit unfair. It is doing zero to five seconds a day on my wrist, which was the goal just to get it much better than it was from factory. And we accomplished that little bit of a low amplitude at 256 and negative two, negative two, negative one. This movement is going to bounce around from negative two to plus six. I know because this is my watch and I've watched it for hours on here to study its performance. All right. And the amplitude is going to range from 220 to 300. It's just going to bounce around kind of a trait of the lower tiered movements, the little bit of fluctuation. And the beat error is supposed to be at 0, 0.0. It's at 0 0.1 now, but it will go to 0, 0.0 eventually because again, this is my watch and I know how it performs. Okay, so let's call it whatever the last number is, plus two. All right, not bad, but low amplitude. Now let's check out the 62 mass. Much higher quality movement, hand assembled, with high quality parts. Let's see how it does. All right, 283 amplitude, 0.0, .0 B error. Neg uh, we have zero as a first rating and now negative two. Oh, and now back to zero. Crazy that there is no snowflakes and you can hear the medium or high beat. And we have zero, 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 the flattest line I've ever seen. It looks crazy. 291 amplitude, very strong. Uh, this movement is unbelievable. On my wrist, it's doing about zero seconds a day. So positional variance is basically perfect. Whatever, whatever uh, it's showing here, it shows on the wrist. It's unbelievable. So excellent movement. You're definitely getting a high quality movement with this one. All right, so if we leave this here for another hour, it's gonna stay the same. That is the consistency of the 8L 
movements. They're just phenomenal. All right, so, <laughs> man, this thing is stunning. This is a masterclass in accuracy. Good job, Seiko. Here is a 30 minute loom shot time lapsed video. The 62 mass is on the left. It did last a little bit longer and was a little bit brighter, but both are amazing Seiko Luma Bright. All right, so the closing thoughts. Both of these are amazing timepieces from Seiko, offering a mid tier and higher tier option. Whichever one you can afford or whichever one you want, it's a winner. No questions about it. So if you like this video, please like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.